Hey guys, Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. Sorry we've been off the grid. Machines are tied up and a little hard to break in on setups to shoot videos. Anyway, I had an opportunity to do just that today and I decided to do a project that would have better been suited as a lathe project, but I decided to do it on a mill. And I decided that for a very specific reason. I mean, naturally, if you only have a mill, then you're a little bit out of luck if you had a lathe project presented to you. But this particular project can be done on either machine, as you will see. I'm only going to do it on the mill, but the geometry of the part lends itself perfectly to a lathe job. So if you're a lathe guy, mill guy, it doesn't matter. You're going to like what you see. Hopefully. Anyway, this is a project that I did many years ago, and it was an apprentice level project. So if you're a master of tool and die maker, uh, you may be interested in what you're going to see, but it may not be for you. So this is more of an entry level project, and although it's entry level, it is something that if you do it correctly, you'll probably have it as long as I've had mine, and I've had mine for a solid 40 years. Uh, it's not a very difficult project, and there will be a dozen different ways to do what I'm going to show you how to do. So the shoulda, coulda, woulda, details, design elements that I'm sure a lot of you guys can contribute. Naturally, feel free to put it in the comment line, but the one that I chose, I chose because it was very basic, it was easy, and it was fast. And the total shoot time on this video, uh, not including this intro, was two hours, start to finish, two hours. So that's not too bad. Setting up the cameras, getting the material, setting up the machines, suit the nuts, two hours complete. So if you're going to do it without somebody looking over your shoulder or rolling film on it, probably about 30 minutes. It's really not a bad job at all. Anyway, let's take a walk out. We'll go on to the bench. I'll show you the parts that you're going to need to accomplish this, and uh, we'll get it going. Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to make something that I made a very long time ago, and i got to tell you, it's one of the things that as I was making it, I was thinking, well, okay, I'll, I might use this a couple times, but it's proven to be quite a valuable tool to my toolbox, and every time I grab it, I remember the time I spent making it, which makes it even better. So, simple project. Half-inch diameter material. This is about two or three quarters of an inch long couple of 1032 or what would the metric conversion be about five millimeter flathead screws doesn't matter if they're stainless or carbon really doesn't matter you know a variety of drills center drills this is a 348 diameter imperial size drill I guess that's about nine millimeters ish and a spring that's all you're gonna need don't grab a spring like this this is a really sad whoop 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 nothing to it expands real easy you don't want something like that grab something that's got a little bit of meat to it something that you can you can stretch but you don't want it to do this when you stretch it okay you want it to be able to stretch a reasonable amount and snap back with some type of with some type of uh, integrity and naturally hand tools needle nose pliers, cutters, because you're going to be cutting on that spring. Now this is a job that's much better suited for the lathe, because anytime you're going to do turning work on a blank, it's better to do it on a lathe. But I think I'm going to do this on a mill, just to show you that it can be done on a mill, and you know there's a more of a reason for it being done on the mill than just it can be. So let's take a walk over to the mill, get this thing done. It is relatively simple, and I think you're going to like having one in your box. Position your part in your milling machine vise, grab a V-block, set it up like I have here, or however you can set yours up without having the V-block jump back and forth. Critical concentricity alignment here is not important, so if you want to indicate that in or line it up with a drill blank however you need to do it, uh, get it in line with your spindle before you begin.
drill the 350 diameter hole through the center of your part and I'm using a 350 drill because I'm using a 250 spring. Countersink the end of your part to accept whatever flathead screw you have selected until it rides flush. Note that the end of this is still raw stock. The good rule of thumb to realize how much further you have to go with your countersink tool before the screw is flush. Just take a visual or measure how far it is from the top of the screw to the surface that you want to hit. And there's your, there's your offset. This one I'm going to say is about another 15th out and we're good to go. And I know the camera can't pick up on that, but boy that's really warm right now. As would be indicated by the smoke, yeah. Do the exact same thing from the other side and beware it's going to be hot. Just found that out. Now put just enough pressure on your part to hold it because realize you are punching the center out of this part and if you have too much jaw pressure you're going to distort this and you don't want to do that. That's why I buy these by the bulk. <laughs> you may have noticed a speed change in the last drilling operation. I like to start my drills a little bit slower when there's a center drill feature there so I don't burn the edges off the drill. Once I have a full bite, I'll crank up the RPMs a little bit. Countersink this end as well. Slow RPM is good. And just to illustrate how not important this is, these are 82 degree screws and I am using a 45 degree countersink. So I have a 90 degree conical feature with an 82 degree screw. It doesn't mean anything. All right, now this is gonna be pretty hot so be real careful taking it out. Let's clean this mess up and set up for the next operation. Next step in the process is to put a couple of 80 thou diameter holes in the set screws or the flathead screws that I'm going to use. And just strictly to line these things up by eye, I'm going to use a gauge pin of the exact same diameter of the threaded part. And I'm just going to visually line it up side to side by eye. 
this is not important and location should be somewhere below the conical feature of the screw. The side to side alignment, all I want to do is line up the pin diameter with the diameter that I want to drill and I'm going to call that my X0. Close enough. This is a half inch long flathead. I'm going to go about 290 from the edge out, about 290. I'm not using stops, I'm going to repeat this operation for the next screw. Now let's change of heart. I am going to crowd the center drill to this side of the screw, closest to the camera. Okay, about uh, dead center of the actual screw itself. I'll give you a close up when I'm done drilling it. Okay, you can see the cross hole in the screw. You're going to need to do that to both screws. No sense in filming that, but that is basically what you're going to look for right there. Set up for the next operation. I have put my blank and a half inch collet in my machine. And I'm holding a parting tool in my vise. And when I bring the parting tool, when I bring the part down to the parting tool, parting tool is positioned on center. Since this is spinning clockwise, the cutting edge of the parting tool has to be towards the rear of the machine. So I've dialed in a height that I want and I'm just going to pull the table across and we're going to cut that off here. You could cut it off in a bandsaw or however, but anybody that's never seen this done, there you go. Now you've seen it done. Or you'll see it done here in a second. Hang on. We're going to try this at 660 RPM, hand feed. And I'm cutting off approximately 600 worth of the end, okay? 600. While the part is still set up, remove the parting tool, put in a turning tool. Same philosophy here guys, the spindle is turning clockwise, cutting tool is facing the rear. All I want to do is remove the part off remnant and I would like to clean that surface up. So a good finish on this surface is relatively important, so take your time. No need to get carried away once it's clean. Get out of the way.
load the other part, the short part in, with the countersink up in the collet. Okay, so you want the parted side down. Do the same thing with the short side. Short piece. When you decide to face off the short slug that you parted off previously, make sure that you engage as much of it as you can in your collet to assure that it's running true. Let's take a look at what we got. And to give you some scale size here, we're going to use a six inch rule. Just remember, this is half inch stock. No blueprints here, guys. This was completely go for it. It's about 600 long, half inch in diameter. And this side is about two inches and change. Two inch 060, two inch, let's say two inch 100. Could be anything. So long as I like to see this longer than the diameter, there's a reason for that. And we have two screws, flathead screws, any size you want to pick, provided the head is smaller than the stock that you use, and pop a couple of cross holes in the end right there. All right, this is when we get creative, and I highly suggest that you heat treat these pieces. Do it with a water hardening, oil hardening, uh, whatever kind of steel you want to use, Heat treating this is a really good idea, and if you can't heat treat the entire thing, then case harden the flat sides that you're faced off, okay? You have one chamfered side that's going to accept the screw, and one flat side. You can case harden these pretty easy, get them up cherry red, dip them in the case at night, whatever, and then rub them out on a piece of emery cloth so that they slip real nice. I bet a lot of light bulbs just went on, huh? All right, let's chop up a piece of spring, put this thing together, and try not to pinch our fingers. Step one of the process, take your raw spring, loop it through one of the screws, secure it. It's not going anywhere, but if you want to close this loop, it probably wouldn't hurt. Take the long piece, chamfer out, feed the spring through, pull it, okay? It's buried, it's not going anywhere. Take your short piece, lay it up against the side, get a visual on the part. And for what you're doing, I would think it would be very safe to start by cutting the spring off somewhere just almost even with the end of the part. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to bend that loop up and see how we're doing. I'm going to cut mine spot on with the end. Okay, right even with the, t right even with the tube without pulling it, right even with the tube. This is the part of the project that there probably is no good way to, to direct you on how to complete this because this is entirely based on how tight this spring is and how big the coil is and just a bunch of feel going on here. So if you have to do this a couple of times, it is completely understandable. I am about a full coil, if not a coil and a half, below that surface now. And I'm just trying to get a visual on where this is going to end up when I stand it up. I don't want it to be loose and I don't want it to be overly tight. So there's a little bit of finesse going on here. I'm going to take the final coil. I'm going to bend the coil up so it's vertical. Keep it in the middle. Keep everything balanced. And then we're going to try to put this thing together uh, again without pinching your fingers. So let's stand this coil up. And the easiest way to do that that i found is to stick a scale in here. and rotate it to the point where you want to bend it and then start standing it up by just sticking your fingernail or something in there and bending it this way all right i'm going to do that off camera i'm going to do some needle nose plier work so that it's pretty and we'll get right back to you all 
Alrighty, I have prepared the end of my spring. Coming across the center relatively, got a decent loop, one screw attached. And for this you're going to need to bend up a paper clip or something into a spring puller. Little loop on the end, little hook on the end of that. And keep that six inch scale handy. Now this is going to be cumbersome and I'm going to apologize for any lack of video quality, but this is a real fumble finger operation and I'll try to do it smooth so you can get some idea what's going on. Remember this is post heat treat and the surfaces are nice and smooth. Put this guy together. Get the screw out. Put your little hook through this. Grab a hold of that. Alright. Now pull the spring out to a point where you can see the exposed inner coil. Now there's no easy way to do this in frame guys, so I'm just going to have to wing this for a second. I'm going to hold my scale with a pair of pliers, as you can see, which I think is a pretty good idea. I'm going to pull this out, and I'm going to engage one of these coils on that. There you go. Okay, now you got a loaded bomb. Thread the other screw on here. Keep your fingers out of the way see if you like what you got. All right. you know, I'm not really thrilled with the angle of the head on here so I will probably redo that. And it's also based on the feel. Let's reposition the camera take a look. Now, what you've effectively just created is an edge finder. Now you could have done this on the lathe but you don't use an edge finder on the lathe and if the mill is the only machine that you have well then good for you. You just created an milling tool on the mill. You can see the kick. The amount that it's going to rock off center is driven by the hole and the diameter of the spring. So the wall thickness of whatever tube you create times two plus the spring is going to be the diameter that you're going to need to know in order to figure out how much it's going to kick out. You want to be able to see it. You don't want to make an edge finder that it only jumps out that much. You want something substantial that's going to rock and roll. So let's throw this in the machine. Don't wind it up at a super high RPM because if the spring is not strong enough, you don't want this piece coming out and going sideways. That ruins the spring and it ruins the parts and it's a pain in the neck. So let's see what kind of results we get in the spindle. Okay, your new tool is officially in the collet. Let's kick it off center. Fire it up. And you're going to have to trust me on the digital reading that I'm going to tell you the x-axis has. So we're looking for repeatability. I'm going to do this a couple times. And if I can get within a half a thou each time, I will be thrilled. So let's check it out. very consistent. If you initial zero is set and you try it again and you try it a third time and you try it a fourth time and it keeps coming up with the second value that you got, well then you should have re-zeroed your edge finder after the first try. So 
it's a live and learn. This is a very good project to do, and one of the benefits of having a cylindrical edge finder versus one that is neck down is if you're doing a really large diameter part, you can still get this against the diameter of the larger part. Some of the ones that are neck down to 200, quarter inch, whatever, it is a little difficult if you're doing like a six inch diameter to get this right up against the center line of the part and watch for an indication that you have found what you're looking for. So I have two of these, actually now I have three of these. The cylindrical one I use on larger parts, the one that's neck down to 200 I use on smaller parts. This is a great project. If you haven't made one, make one, you're going to enjoy it. Thanks for watching. All right, well I can guarantee that if you successfully pull that off, that that's going to be in your box for a really long time. And if you ever do have any problem with that thing sticking, Pull it apart and lap the two faces that go together. Just put it on a piece of 800 or 1600 emery cloth and just wipe it out until it's nice and smooth. And if uh, you want to keep it clean while it's assembled, kind of bend it, stick a piece of white paper in there and turn both sides. It'll have a tendency to clear out any debris or anything that may make it stick. So it's a nice project to have naturally. The cylindrical body is good for larger diameters. You'll find that out if you have one that's got a smaller uh, locator body. Anyway, uh, we're going to be posting some videos on some scuba diving here pretty soon because I just got back from Yucatan. I was diving some caves that are 20, 30 million year old formations on the inside. Truly remarkable environment. If, even if you're not a cave diver, you should see some of the holes that we had to drop in in the jungle. And uh, you would be thinking, what are you thinking? <laughs> that's exactly what I said to myself when I saw the holes where the guy said, well, that's where we're going. Uh, anyway, thank you very much. Thank you to all the guys that have been contributing through Patreon and signing on. I do very much appreciate that, and I haven't touched any of that account. I'm saving that for a nice camera so I can get some really tight close-ups and make better quality videos for all of you guys. So thank you very much. Anyway, Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas.